Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am sitting here with uh, a good buddy of mine who is a big, um, big um, person in the theme park community, um, and glad to call him a friend, glad to call him a colleague. Part of the YouTube family. I'm sitting here with Scott from SoCal Exploring. How you doing, Scott? Hey, what's going on, everybody? And what's going on, Anthony? And yeah, I mean, Anthony, we th- what is this? The the third mindless horror? I think fourth. I don't know. I think it may be third. That you're that I, you've I, been I on? Check it. Yeah. I think it's like third or fourth, probably. Yeah, I think it's third or fourth. So I'm a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> veteran. There you go, man. Welcome back to the show. It's been a while since you've been on. So how how things been, man? Um, it's been going good, you know, this whole coronavirus situation and kind of bringing people down, but you just got to stay positive through it all and, uh, you know, working, grinding that theme park life, uh, going out to the parks and film when I can. There's a fly in the shot right now. Go away. Um, <laughs> you know, just uh, doing the normal things, grinding. Yeah, man, I know this coronavirus does suck, uh, but we're all getting through it and we're all trying to uh, release the best content we can while everyone at least is home so you have something to enjoy um and watch listen to whatever you're wherever you're on if you're listening to this on like spotify and all that i appreciate all those uh, followers on that and if you're watching this on youtube well welcome to uh welcome you can see our faces on this one yeah there at you least go. this <laughs> provides uh entertainment for you guys yeah so um so yeah, we got SoCal Exploring on here. We're gonna talk a little bit about him today. We got some. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Invisible Man. We've both seen that recently. That was uh, the the recent most biggest kind of horror movie that came out. Uh, mm-hmm. We're gonna talk some news on uh, that potentially being on video on demand uh, Friday. So that would be cool if you guys haven't seen it. So we'll talk a little bit about that and um, what our plans are for the future as far as both of our channels go. So. Scott, let's get right into it, man. You are rapidly growing. You are almost to 4,000 subscribers, man. How does that feel? Well, first of all, it's felt like the the longest 100 subs of my life. Yep. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's it's like with any YouTube milestone. You, you grow and you grow and you grow. And then as soon as you get to like 100 away from a milestone, like 1K or 2K or whatever it is, it's like, all right, come on. Come, I think I was, I'm literally, as we're filming this, I'm sitting at 3990. So <laughs> yeah. it's like super long, um, but it feel it feels good. It really does feel good. Um, all the hard work putting in, and that's what I've always like try to push through everybody. And like I mean, I've seen it with you guys too. You know, like the, the hard work. It doesn't matter about the numbers or anything. Like hard work is gonna get you there, and that's what I'm feeling right now, and I'm loving it. Definitely. No, I feel the the hard work portion of it. It's like. We've been just trying to get as much content as we can out there, trying to cover whatever we can out there, uh, whether it be conventions, whether it just be movie reviews. Uh, our biggest thing lately is just recording a lot of podcasts and getting a lot of guests on. Uh, unfortunately, with coronavirus, we had to reschedule a lot of um, guests and uh, until further notice. But uh, I'm glad that we still have you on the show and we are still talking with you and we're still sitting down and doing this interview um, and just – having a good time trying to like i said trying to get through this coronavirus yeah. bullshit. we gotta make people happy so hopefully this entertains you guys um definitely there's, we can't really go definitely. out to the park so at least we're doing this <laughs> yeah 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 no it's just because you know I, I when i announced that you were going to be on this week i've had a lot of messages you know saying that they were they were going to be excited for this episode and are looking forward to this so i mean i'm glad it i'm giving people what they want. Yeah, yeah, i think I'm i think glad. a lot of people like to hear us together over like since like we have done podcasts together over the over the years i think a lot of people are used to hearing us now so it's like they like it which is yeah, good definitely you know, it's i mean like, me and anthony have grown as friends more than just youtube colleagues so yeah no it's it's i think with podcasting too is is the reason why i i have uh three podcasts right now the, i think with just podcasting it's it's a fun way to really talk about certain subjects to an mm-hmm. certain extent uh rather than make one uh, a bunch of videos over it you can talk for like an hour or two or whatever however well, yeah, long because you want to do them. with certain topics you with certain topics you can make a video about it like when i just did my 
Avengers Campus video right now. Like, there's just so much information, like, in that. And, like, yeah, I, I'll, I'm do, I do a good job of putting, like, lengthy videos. But, I mean, there's only so much I can put into each topic, uh, each subtopic of that video in an actual, like, normal video rather than a podcast. So you can just go on and on and talk about it thoroughly. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's just, there's so much you can talk about with my podcast, with, you know, all podcasts in general, but mm-hmm. I, I, I lately just really been, uh, loving the podcast game. I mean, and I love that now, um, you know, you know, since I started mine back two years ago, I love that when people have come on, they've been inspired to want to do their own podcast. And I think that's awesome because oh, I mean, you've inspired me, you know, like I, I have done podcasts here and there, but they're just like crappy little, like record Google Hangouts, like. I mean, I've always yeah, wanted yeah. to get the podcast game rolling, and I finally have the motivation to actually do it. So, <laughs> and a lot of that comes from from you, and I don't know. Yeah, so thank yeah, you for no, that. <laughs> I, I, no, man, I, I and I hate to, like, be the guy to say, like, oh, I, I inspired him because I don't. I mean, I, I just – what I yeah. do is, like, I love I love – Having you guests like on, people. I love talking with people. Yeah, and I love helping people. I love collabing. And, you know, recently I just did, which is probably out now, I just did a podcast with my cousin. And, you know, we talked, me and Sammy just talked about, you know, what we, how we got started. And, and, it, and it's cool being on the, the guest side of the podcast because I'm always used to just being on the host side of the podcast. And being on the guest side is, is so unique and fun because you get to actually just, you know, help someone else with their podcast and, you know, talk about, you know, either you or talk about a subject, which I think is awesome. So I'm looking forward to hopefully guest starting on more podcast pretty soon um, because being the guest is really fun. Yeah, I mean, we're going to film one right after this for me. So yep. <laughs> there you so, go. <laughs> if you guys are watching this, um, I don't know if we're releasing them the same day or not or if he releases his first or I release mine, uh, just go to SoCal Exploring's channel if you're not yet followed him. Um, and you know, go watch the podcast um, because we're gonna talk a lot of good. You guys look at the uh, best of both good, worlds. Yeah, you're gonna we're talking a lot of good haunt stuff on there, so you're gonna definitely mm-hmm. wanna check that one out. So yeah, so um, so you guys aren't bored and self quarantine, you can uh, check out Anthony's podcast or my podcast first or whatever you want to do, and then go and watch the other one right after. <laughs> there you go, man. So. Let's talk about the theme park game, man. You um you relaunched the channel with the uh, SoCal Exploring Media brand, which is a uh, really mm-hmm. really awesome um, thing to do. You have your own website, uh, SoCalExploringMedia.com, where you post um, frequently and you talk a little bit about you know blogs and stuff about stuff coming to the theme parks, um, new attractions, you know what what what's new in the theme parks and then you, of course you have the SoCal Exploring channel um, of course where you get the visual side of that of uh, construction updates um, going to events you know covering different things in the theme parks and of course you got your social medias where people can keep uh, keep updated with you of course with both the website and the channel uh, I gotta give it to you man that's a lot on your plate how do you how do you have how do you manage all of that well, it's, it's crazy that we're talking about it now because I remember the last podcast we were talking about like, oh, you know, like uh, going out to the park and filming like YouTube videos. How hard is it? And now it's like so much stuff to to manage. Um, I don't know how I really how I really manage it. Sometimes I find myself stressed out of my mind, but other times like I'll put out like a blog and I'll just see like how professional it looks and how much I've improved or I'll go back and look at the old blogs. I think that's what keeps me going as much. I'm sure that's with any content creator, no matter what you're doing is a lot of the times I will go back and like watch my old videos or I'll look at my old pictures or I'll read like my blogs when I very first started and I'll look at the newest ones. I'm like, damn, like I, I got so much better. So I think that's one of the things that keeps me going as far as managing it goes. It depends on how big that announcement is. So, like, obviously, like, with the Halloween Horror Nights announcement, um, when that stuff comes around, I usually write... I, I usually film the video right away when I get the press release. So, I film the video right away because that will obviously take the longest to edit. And I will edit that. I will... Or, actually, no. I skipped a step. I'll post about it on social media. SoCal Explorer Media on Instagram or whatever it is. Um, I'll post about it there and then I'll film it and then I'll edit it. So the hype's already building around on social media and I'll be like, stay tuned for more details. And that really hooks people, even though they could just go watch someone else, other <laughs> influencers video. But a lot of people stay loyal and wait till my videos come out. And uh, 
I will film the video, I'll edit it. I'll once it's uploading or exporting, I'll be writing the blog on the website after I create the thumbnail and such. And then I'll get that blog up. I'll post that blog around the same time the video comes out. And then I will just tweet everything on social on social media or like post the links and stuff. As far as like other like smaller announcements goes, like say if it's like a new like merchandise line at Disneyland, it's a lot less hectic. It's just mainly with the big announcements like Horror Nights or a new attraction at any theme park or an opening date. Those are the ones that I gotta like be quick with, really quick with. Um, but other than that, it's, it, I get everything done in one day, but I can have more time to spread it out during the day instead of just doing it all in two hours. Definitely. No, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing about, um, the great thing about social media is just promoting until the video does come out to get people you know Hooked. notified and excited for it that's like one of the biggest things i think about filming content these days is the fact that social media is such a powerful tool that we have on our arsenal and um you know the fact that we get to use it for of course youtube and just everything now these days it's it's such a, a amazing tool to have in your hand you know i mean it's literally in the palm of your hand you got your phone and literally you can just post up a tweet right now and tweet it to the world uh, same thing with instagram you can po post up a photo or a video of some sort and the whole world will be seeing it and i think with social media it, it's changed so much drastically over the years um, that it's just it's it gets better and better as you go on there's more features you can use to edit your pictures um, you know uh, Twitter most most recently just made it so you can tweet and you can put more on your tweet, uh, sharing links to videos and um, you know sharing links to your website and stuff. And of course, like you were just mentioning, of course, the minute a HHN something you know an announcement drops or when a new theme park uh, announces like a date for something or a new ride attraction coming, like I see you, I follow you, and I have the bell notifications on. You're literally you're on it, dude. Like within yeah. the next couple of hours, it's out. Even 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 like uh, if I'm at uh, my normal daytime job, I, I try to just step away and post it real quick to get people hooked. Cause obviously I can't I can't film a video until I'm off work, so I'll uh, I'll just have to hook people on the social media at least till I get home. Definitely no, and I like I said like it's one of the biggest tools that you have. So I mean literally you can be yeah, hyping people that, up. That's one of the things that creators use the most. Yeah, social it's, media. It's, it's awesome, and then I mean they have freaking apps now where you can even schedule post to go up at times like I, my yeah. cousin just introduced me to that and i'm like holy crap i didn't even think this exists like yeah, that's it's, awesome it's crazy because like um there's certain like events that we go to like media events that we go to that like are they're like all right keep this on the low until the certain date and then you can release it so it's nice to be like okay well i'm gonna be at work on monday when that um i, I don't know what the word is but when the the secret gets lifted so I can just schedule it for a certain time and it go up while I'm at work and not have to worry about it at all. Definitely. Yeah. No, that's such a big tool right there to have. And I think I'm going to start getting into that game a little bit more of technology is crazy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's advanced so much over the years and it continues to thrive and get better as, as time goes on. Um, so, you know, you're, you're constantly going to SeaWorld, you're constantly going to Universal Studios, um, Disneyland, uh, every now and then a Knott's Berry Farm trip, uh, Six Flags. Uh, what do you, what would you say the hardest thing um, about keeping a schedule going with all the parks? Is it distance wise or is it just having the money to go out to these parks and do it? Is it just you having to plan, okay, what content am I going to do while I'm out there? Because I can only come out here for so many times that I got to plan something. What do you think the hardest thing is uh, doing all of this? The hardest thing I'd say is um, the distance. The distance is really difficult, especially to somewhere like Universal. I feel like no matter where you are, unless you live in Studio City, it's hard to get to Universal because of the traffic. The traffic yeah. is, is insane. Um, so definitely the distance is one thing, especially since Universal is a big part of my channel. Um, but I can't get out to the park as much, but I've grown such a big community around it. That's why I'm slowly trying to, and I think I've already done a good job at this, is um, build my Disney fan base more. And I think that I've gotten at least a small fan base for Disney. I mean, I have my fans that watch the Disney content, but I need more of a community around that than just uh, the people who watch it. Because with the Universal, I have a community. A lot of people... Um, love my universal videos and I'll always wait for them and everything so I want to build that with Disney and I've already built it with other theme parks because all the other theme parks are small like SeaWorld and Legoland they have small communities so 
it's easy to tap into those theme parks and already get yourself noticed. So that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, the hardest thing is distance, really. And Disneyland and Universal are both kind of far from me. So uh, it's probably the hardest thing. I know, especially taking that extra mile to having to go out to Six Flags every now and then, too. Yeah, Six Flags. Every, a... I try to stray away from Six Flags sometimes. Um, a lot of the times that I go to Six Flags, it's just to have fun now because there's not really a lot going on anymore besides like when they build new new coaster every year. And uh, with Fright Fest construction, it, it gets a lot of numbers, but I don't, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of Fright Fest. So <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, whatever about it. I just go there to have fun because of the coasters. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's a, I think that's the thing with us is like, you know, Universal for us is kind of a drive to go out there uh, multiple nights for Horror Nights every every year. So we were lucky and fortunate enough to go when we could. However, Knott's is literally right in our backyard, so we can literally – we I think Knott's is like our new kind of like um, – it's going to be our priority a lot for this year. I'm not saying we're not going to do HHN stuff because HHN was literally the foundation of this channel, but – we will be covering a lot more knots this year because it's literally right in our backyard. Uh, yeah, as far it's as so close throughout to you the, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's literally like right up the freeway. And as far as like daytime operations go, like I let the theme park people take care of that. I will literally cover knots when it's scary farm time. Yeah, That's it. yeah, exactly. Um, so you've re you really expanded content on the channel because I remember for the longest too. Um, it was always, of course, it was always theme parks, and it was always uh, a lot, majority of the time was Universal. And then when you rebranded for SoCal Explorer Media, you you made that expansion to Disneyland to all theme parks in Southern California. What was the biggest decision behind that um, idea that you wanted to do for this new rebrand of SoCal Explorer Media? Well, you know, I I wanted to be uh, more of a a media brand, and shout out to the uh, TLAV boys because that's why I got the idea for the whole media name. Um, it, it's seeing media in your name, especially like at least on one form of uh, social media platform, it just makes you look more professional and more of a media outlet. So there is media events as I go to and as well as other theme park people go to. But the thing with these media events is there's influencers slash blogger events and there's media events now i want to be more media um which media gets more like preview stuff and all the other stuff like that um whereas bloggers and influencers are there just to like post on their instagram story and be like hey look at me you know like they want yeah the the parks want these people there to like show hey look this is a this big person here riding our attraction or talking about our our park or whatever it may be with the media side of it and that's why i built up so calix for media is you get to do a lot more like interview stuff um I, as far as i know the pets media event has not been postponed quite yet um we're supposed to have a pets media event this this month i don't know if they're going to postpone it or if they're going to just keep it on the same day and only limit it to media obviously because of universal is closed right now but um, I'm going to get the chance to interview some of the stars of the Secret Life of Pets film. So that's nothing that an influencer or a blogger would get to do. That's just solely like media because you have to have that professionalism. And that's yeah. one of the big reasons I wanted to expand into that covering all theme parks range. And now I have expanded. I've gotten more opportunities and it gives it brings more content in because I mean, you know me, like I'm, I'm a personality. I am good with like being on camera and being happy and everything. And I'm good at doing that and doing normal vlogs. But at the same time, I like to bring professional content to YouTube for my fans, my community and my supporters, etc. So they get the best of both worlds and not just one thing. You know, I'm always wanting to do more and more and more instead of just one, one little thing. So that's, that's the reasoning behind expanding into SoCal Explorer Media and, uh, and going into all these different theme parks and covering them all. Yeah, definitely. I, and I think there was, not even lying, there was one point in my YouTube career where I was thinking to brand over to, like, all things theme parks. But mm -hmm. um, there's so many on YouTube that, you know, do a, such a great job on it. So, And I feel like with me, I I know my place in my, in this world, and I know where I'm supposed to or be with this thing. channel. So <laughs> it's like, you know, I mean, I don't 
think I'd fit in well with the theme park community. As much as a theme park goer as I am, I don't think I'd fit well in it. That's why I, I stick to my horror roots, but I see it with with you guys, with the other channels and, and how you guys interact with, of course, the theme parks and, and, you know, interact with the fans on YouTube and how you guys are on social media. Like, it's perfect for you guys. Like, you guys think, are literally... I think one of the, the biggest things in is with the theme park community is it's so, there's so many now, you know? And it's, it's so... Um overpopulated in a theme park community which is fine everyone's doing their thing but and in, in order to bring yourself into the theme park community i feel like you just have to and a lot of people don't want to do it you have to just grind your ass off it's so stressful when if you have a glitch like a glitch like like you guys do with the knights of horror and horror and everything i'd recommend sticking to that because that's your thing you know everything about horror you know that that is your thing yeah. And a lot of people say, like, oh, I want to be a theme park blogger. And a lot of people do. A lot of people, like, they blow up because they do construction updates like crazy. That's just not me. I just, I like quality over quantity. And that's one of the things is I always say um, the theme park community is not meant for people like me or other certain um, media outlets. It's, it's not meant for people like us. But mm. we're here and I'm trying to work as hard as I possibly can to uh, grow bigger in it. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it is the, you got to put in the time and effort, I think for any, just any YouTube channel, but the theme park, uh, community and in the bloggers in the theme park, um, community are, I think one of the most hardworking people, um, out there. They're, they're constantly going to the park, giving you the updates. And I see that with SoCal exploring and I see, um, the constant work that's being put into these, um, uh, these videos and everything. Um, and I, I, I look forward to when, uh, you guys all put up videos cause it's something that I don't cover much, but if I can't get to the park, it's something that I can watch and see the updates of what's going on at the parks or, you know, if I just don't choose to go to the parks, but I'm still interested in seeing what's, what's going on and what's constantly being added. It's, it's really cool to watch you guys cover that stuff. And I really think it's, it's really cool to see what you guys are doing and you guys, you guys are into it, so that's always a good thing. When you're into it, I mean, and you love what you're doing. You know, you're gonna have a passion to go out and do it, which is yeah. awesome. Um, what do you? What would you say? Um, if if you can, if you could just change one thing with your channel, what what would be that one change you can do? One change, um, probably right now. With the channel or just my life in general, hoping the channel. Because <laughs> if it was my life in general, I'd change. I mean, it doesn't even have to be like at. anything. <laughs> I mean, it could be, yeah, the living. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah most I mean, likely, yeah, I, most I likely. Because there's something that I'd really change about my channel. I feel like I, I've established a good, a good part with it. Um, other than that, I guess I could say numbers, yeah. but like I said, numbers don't really matter to me. Mm. But yeah, probably just where I live. Yeah, living. I guess if you, if you lived in a. If you lived in a stable area that was like in the middle of every theme park, that'd probably mm -hmm. be perfect for you. Yeah. Um, where uh, Where do you see the channel going? Where do you want to see the channel going in the next next five, five years? years? I want to. Um, I want to be the Tim Tracker. <laughs> uh, no, for real though. Like I, no. I, I've always looked up. I don't really. Um, I've lost my fanboyness. Like maybe like two years ago with uh, other YouTubers or um, just anyone in general because in the entertainment realm, you just kind of have to adapt to meeting these big people and meeting celebrities and such like that and not overreacting about it. But the Tim Tracker has always been a a person that I've looked up to. And he's one of those people that like, if I met, then I'd be so happy to meet because he's just, I, I mean, he's living life, you know, Disney's paying for them to go to Hawaii and stuff like that. Like, that's crazy. You know, I just... And he's covering all the theme yeah. parks. He's covering all these different attractions. He's he's living his life. So that's who I strive to be. And I want to be... I want to be doing what he's doing, but even bigger. And have multiple outlets and have a yeah. team around me. An actual stable team when I get big enough. And just turn it into a big media thing to where it can be just more than SoCal Exploring. I can grow into Orlando or grow into places like Dollywood, Cedar Point, etc. Be that big and have a whole team to cover different theme parks. Because I'm only one person. I mean, I have Savannah with us, me, with me, but I'm only one person. <laughs> I can only do so much. So that's my ultimate yeah. goal five years from now. Yeah, yeah. no. 
I definitely get the whole team part. I think uh, that's the biggest thing of the, with over here at the Knights of Horror. Of course, I got me and Sammy, and then I got two photographers. If um, if I can get a hold of them, usually, I mean, depending on their schedules and stuff, but I have two amazing photographers that are willing to help out, and they're really cool. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just. I'm just, yeah, I, I, I can see where you want to go, and I, I can see that vision mm -hmm. happening in the next five years. It's just all about that grind, dude, and I see that grind with you. I mean, it, it's it's always been about um, the hard work and dedication you put into the channel, and you obviously, you continue to do that uh, week after week, and um, whether you can't go to the theme parks or not, especially in times like these, you continue to find ways how to entertain the audience it, yeah. and, you know, engage with your audience. Yeah, and that's why we are doing these podcasts right now. I mean, we had them all always scheduled to do them, and then, you know, this epidemic really yeah. hit bad. So, I mean, it's even better that we're doing them now because now it gives the audience a chance to still watch two of their favorite yeah, YouTubers. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a good thing because, I mean, we had these podcasts planned beforehand, like I said, before all the parks closed. So now it's even better because I, I feel better that we're putting these out so people can enjoy. You know, you guys, you guys can all enjoy this stuff definitely all right man you are sounding like you're on your way to success man and i and i'm 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 there in the front seat watching it grow I have the bell notifications on i am on the instagram i'm on twitter i i follow the website i'm doing everything man and i can't wait to watch you grow even more and more so dude socal exploring media you know i am very excited to see where this goes and i cannot wait to um watch hey, it grow thank more you and for more, that man and, and you guys are on your way to success too and we'll talk about that in my podcast so you can check out that and when we're filming it a bit but uh, yeah i mean i'm doing my thing you know as always if you guys have listened to the older podcasts with me and anthony and the mindless horror i mean i'm doing my thing i'm still the same person never changing let's talk about horror though that's it yeah let's do it brother so we got a couple things we're going to talk about today. Of course, in light of coronavirus, the one of the biggest news that came out uh, today from Universal Pictures was they're going to start releasing a lot of their theatrical movies that are in theaters right now onto video on demand uh, due to the epidemic. Um, and two of those big uh, hitters that just hit theaters uh, within the last month was, of course, The Hunt and The Invisible Man. Um, I've seen both of them. I've liked both of them, but um, I, I, I'm excited to see them. Uh, come to video on demand because that gives uh, more opportunity mm -hmm. for people to watch him and um, to bring up their box office numbers. Now, Invisible Man, I will say this does not need to bring up yeah. their box office numbers. Yeah, because they that, yeah, they did kill it. it. <laughs> box office. Yeah, with a nine million dollar budget, they made a hundred million dollars uh, in the box office. So not only did they make their money back, but they, Blumhouse, of course, made a fat mm -hmm. profit off of the Invisible Man and. I have to say, Invisible Man it was, was super a freaking impressive. fantastic so movie. So impressive. Yeah. Um, I, I, for one, they kept, of course, the original – if you guys ever seen the original 1930s Invisible Man, they kept the overall arc of a – of kind of like a scientist genius uh, creating something to make him invisible. And um, – that overall arc is still in this uh, reboot or remake, however you want to picture it, reimagining of the uh, Invisible Man that we got from Blumhouse. Um, and I really like the way they did it. I won't go into too much spoilers about uh, how he becomes invisible, but the way they did it in this one was a very kind of realistic. It's very really um, based on point like, on the it, which I really enjoy. Yeah, which is a, it's a major factor in society and how stuff works. But he did a, they did an amazing job with this movie, um, and I I really look forward to seeing if they want to do any more remakes or reboots of other classic monsters. I heard there was talks that Blumhouse might be wanting to do a Dracula movie, um, with uh, I think one of the lady it was like a, a lady director and I forget her name at the moment, but she was in talks. She had like a good story to pitch to Blumhouse and Universal, and they're all on board for it. So we might be getting be a Dracula so cool. reboot in sometime in the near future from Blumhouse. Which secretly this is like the revival of the. Dark I mean, universe, yeah, because I was so it. disappointed when the Dark Universe got scrapped. It's oh man, it's whatever. But I think that Blumhouse is doing a good job. If they can keep up the same. Um, the same way that they did the Invisible Man with other classic monsters, I, I'm all for it. Yeah. No, Invisible Man was just... It kept, it kept you on your feet uh, from the very beginning of the movie till the very end. I mean, it was just one of those things that kept you on your toes. I mean, the way it starts to the way... It's, it's pretty scary, it's just, too, for an Invisible Man. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's a scary situation. 
it's not only is it a scary situation, but the fact that like, I mean, if you really think about, I mean, okay, it, 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 this one is in the trailer, but um, of course the the two uh, the married couple they had an abusive relationship, and that was kind of established in this trailer. Um, and you know, as you're seeing this throughout the entire movie of the Invisible Man kind of messing with her, it, it is a very scary concept of the fact that. You know, he went all this way to fake his death and then to come back as the Invisible Man mm -hmm. just to taunt with her. I mean, it, it is such an amazing concept for a movie and um, is overall scary. I mean, and then you got, of course, the guy who did Saw and the Insidious franchise. You know, I mean, um, he is an amazing director and, and, and he did an amazing job on this movie. And, you know, I, I didn't doubt it for one bit, but when I saw him, he was behind the camera on it. I remember when they were starting to film this, like, day one on Twitter, they would post pictures and stuff. And I, I would follow this movie as they were filming it after when they were in post-production up until the initial release of this film. Um, they did an amazing job. And I am very excited to see if they do continue to reboot more classic monsters. Uh, and, I, like I said, I was impressed by it because... I went to the theaters, not thinking this was going to be so great. It's Blumhouse. So Blumhouse has been kind of a letdown as of recently. Uh, so I was like, uh, I don't know. But, however, I was so impressed. Like, I loved it. I, I really did genuinely love it. I, I had, I put my review out, and I don't know if you read this or not, but there was a couple parts where I was like, uh, kind of cheesy and um, kind of small spoiler alert. I got more of like a super villain vibe at times from the Invisible Man rather than like the classic Invisible Man. So that was like my only complaint about it. Like it's like, oh, look at Captain Marvel going up against the Invisible Man. <laughs> I got kind of that vibe sometimes. And yeah. also Eliz Eliz Elizabeth Moss yeah. is ass. No, I uh, Elizabeth Moss. I can't say it. The the main lead, sometimes her acting was kind of weird. Elizabeth Moss. <laughs> yeah, you got it right. Elizabeth Moss, if you guys don't know, was also in a um, a Jordan Peele um, Blumhouse produced movie as well. Their name wasn't on it, but Jason mm -hmm. Blum was the producer on it, which was, of course, Us. Um, and she's really uh, coming back. I mean, I remember she was in a couple other like movies as, in minor roles, but she's really coming she back. She is. I think she's doing a good job. And, um, yeah, and she's really taking over the horror world as, as well. I mean, she's done a lot of projects with Blumhouse. And um, I would love to see her in more stuff uh, as far as horror goes because I think she can honestly be like the next big name in horror. Oh, yeah, for sure. It. It's like uh, Lupita. If she were to do another horror movie, then I think that she'd do great in establishing her role in the horror world. And Lupita's the um, red from us, yeah. for those it, of you guys who don't know. I mean, especially from her coming out of the success of Black Panther mm -hmm. going into us, it's like, okay, she didn't do a lot of talking yeah. in Black Panther. She was just kind of that character that was there. Um, a yeah. love interest for Black Panther. And, you know, for her to step out of that kind of shared spotlight and get the main spotlight. Yeah, she was us, she I mean, was a lead in that movie, and it was she was doing a great job. So if, if Elizabeth can keep up this work, then we could see the same success for her. No, definitely. And I am very much looking forward to seeing, um, again, more hopefully remakes or reboots of the classic monster movies and a new twist on them for uh, Blumhouse. Uh, Blumhouse has literally been killing it with getting rights. They have they have been killing it with getting, getting rights. I don't know. Yeah, they have of course the Halloween franchise, which they're making two more uh, as we speak. Um, of course, they just obtained the rights to the Invisible Man, which is out now. Uh, of course, they got their Purge franchise, which is an original concept from them. And if you guys didn't know this, or if you guys remembered. They are the guys, masterminds behind the Paranormal mm -hmm. Activity franchise. They are. A little fun fact. Yep. <laughs> that was some of their first movies. Yeah, going back, that was some of their like first movies, um, which hooked a lot of audiences. Uh, and it's still one of those these biggest time, like what, household names for horror films or horror series. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny that you bring that up because I was actually just reading an article how you know everybody talks about the success of Marvel in this ten years that they've been doing and how they've mm -hmm. profited so much money, but secretly no one has actually looked at Blumhouse's success. They're bringing in money. They're just they're as bringing equal. in so much money. No, they are just as equal as Marvel's success. You know, not not yeah, as much. But the money, success but they make they. Yeah, with the success and, and how much, you know, they make, sh you know, low-budget horror films that are actually really good quality most of the time. Uh, and, they and, make you know, a some lot people like those, like, kind of cheesy horror films. I know I, I like them to an extent sometimes, but there's a, there's a big community out there that likes 
those like cheesy horror films that are just wild ideas like the purge like who comes up with that the blumhouse did <laughs> yeah 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 no definitely and and, I, and purge is honestly one of my favorite franchises like i love the whole concept mm-hmm. behind it and you know from the first one not a lot of people like the first one i enjoyed the first one because it like, was just it was, it, it, it was gonna build it up and then you know yeah and and that's exactly what the second one did it, it took the concept okay we have this you know it was inside the house let's show what it's like outside when people are outside in the purge and lower class people let's see what they do during the purge and then in purge three we took it to okay let's see um the purge is going through a threat right now where it could get canceled if this person becomes president let's try to kill this person so we can keep the purge going and you saw like a political point of view of the purge and then of course with the first purge you got to see how it all started at staten island which i thought was an amazing concept and that was actually one of the only uh, movie premieres I ever went to without. Oh, movie that's movie. great. <laughs> yeah, I got I got free tickets to go see the first Purge, and I'm like, this is awesome. And then come to it find out, premiere. Jason Blum is there introducing the movie. Yeah, it's the crazy. Like, like a lot of people went to that, and they didn't. I, I remember seeing pictures about it, and I thought a lot of people were like, Jason Blum's here, and I was like, oh wow, the, random. <laughs> oh yeah, because literally, I I I do a, I did a mm-hmm. lot of these free ticketed events because literally these were. Like, I thought this was just a test screening of the movie, and it literally, all it was, it premiere. was the actual premiere yeah. and screen. If you, the movie, um, awesome. And if you guys are into movies and going to movie premieres, if you, like, sign up with a certain website, like, for free movie previews, they'll actually send you emails of, like, certain movie previews. Some movies will be, like, six months before they release, and it'll just be, like, the, the B version of the film to see, okay, what do audience think of it? Like, should we change this? And they'll actually, when you go to these reviews, I've been to or previews, I've been to a couple of them. They'll like take down your email and ask you what you thought about it. And they'll take that email to different production companies and everything. And they'll invite you to stuff like the first purge premiere. Like, and yeah. it'll just, it'll be not all the time something as big as that, but there will be random times where it'll get some big premiere like that that you get invited to for free. Yeah. No, definitely. No, I, I, uh, the ones I've been to, I, I went to see The Grudge, uh, and I saw that in like August, and it didn't come out till like September, or it didn't come out till like January. Um, I saw Zombieland two. That's a big one. And uh, I saw that in like I saw that in like September. That didn't come out till mm-hmm. like November or October, uh, and or even later actually. It didn't come out till like like it didn't come out till like twenty twenty I think, or maybe like late twenty nineteen. I don't remember, but. Um, right after you, I mean, all they ask you is to take a survey of what you thought, what can, what can be changed mm-hmm. so they can get, so the they can change stuff the up audience and stuff. And I saw, yeah, I saw a movie that wasn't even finished special yeah. effects wise and had like a lot of different stuff than what we saw in the final product, which usually is a cool thing because you get to see one cut of the movie that, uh, you know, was what it was. And then, you know, once you take that survey and once the movie comes out, then you see almost a whole. Well, you get to see the behind the scenes of it. You know, the the pre production, which is really neat because yeah, you can still go see the actual final production of it, but why not see the preview of like a, a movie without special effects for free? You know, like it's not usually like with tours no, and definitely. stuff, or like if you want to see the behind the scenes of a movie, you have to pay or obviously be an actor or something. But I mean, this is this is free, you know? Yeah. No, yeah, not only that, not only is it free, sometimes they'll actually invite you and they'll literally pay you, they'll give you like yeah. a $10 Visa gift card sometimes, depending um, on the movie. But yeah. No, it's, not like no, it's just time, you get so many opportunities. Cool and like, like, this isn't us talking like YouTube stuff. This is like, you can you can just be an ordinary person and just like sign up for one of these movie yeah. preview websites. No, that's literally how I found out about it is like I was on scrolling on Instagram and they're like, oh, you can come test screen mm-hmm. this movie. And it was The Grudge. I'm like, oh, let's go check it out. Yeah. You know, it's a horror movie. Let's go see it. Um, I would not recommend <laughs> that. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was glad I saw it for mm-hmm. free. But, you know, I mean, um, it's a really cool experience. If you, if you guys are big time movie buffs, definitely be on the lookout when you see like ads on Facebook where it says like you can RSVP and uh, uh, watch this movie a uh, preview this movie um of course they make you sign a non-disclosure agreement until the movie comes out then you can actually talk mm-hmm. about it but um it's really cool to just kind of get to experience all this uh, stuff and and have a good time so yeah man i mean invisible man was great and i can't wait to see what's next in, in blumhouse's uh 
you know, many lists. It's it's really hit or miss with Blumhouse. It sometimes is a hit or miss. Really good movies sometimes, but they make to, really but you movies. know, Blumhouse keep doing their thing because it may be hit or miss with the movies, but yeah. after all this, like after all the negativity and stuff, they're they're successful. Like no matter what, they're successful. They're killing it. Oh yeah. Like I enjoyed the hunt. The hunt was. Yeah. Awesome. Now I have I have I some choice awards for that, but you know. <laughs> Uh, with the yeah, no, I, I I think I I think what I liked about it it was essentially the movie Ready or Not, but more political. Yes, yes, if, very uh, very much so. Into that, but but I I enjoyed it. I I like I love the main girl who was like just a badass in that movie the entire movie, and um uh, a lot of the actors that I've seen in like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia were in there. You know, like Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's one of my favorite yeah. actors. I like him. There was a lot of cool uh, little. Uh, people that uh, you know, people that you haven't seen in stuff for a long time that I saw and I was like, hey, I haven't seen him in a while. I'm good, good to see that he's still doing stuff though. So mm-hmm. um, that was cool. All but right. yeah, it's it's a it's fun. Yeah, I mean, like uh, the one of the one of the things that I enjoy about it is how gory it is, without giving any spoilers away. Like within the first, actually no, not the first, like uh, two minutes or so. But once they actually like start um, getting shot down and everything, it is so gory and gruesome it's so weird like (laughs) it's just so weird how gruesome it is but i love it i I love that aspect of it also spoiler spoiler alert for you guys um all the advertising that they did for like the characters that you see aren't actually in the movie as long as you think they would be did you notice that yeah (laughs) Uh uh-huh yeah it was so weird. It was just so weird. <laughs> it, it's it's so funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. The main lead that um, the the natural main lead of the movie you won't expect until you dive a little bit deeper into the movie. I mean, you see her in the trailer, and like you know, there's one part where, she, of course, you see her go to the gas station and she kills these people. Mm-hmm. If you guys watched like the first trailer back in like that came out in like July or yeah. August, um, and, I, and I think what really made hype of this movie was the fact that it got pushed back from September. Yeah, I think it built up a lot more hype. The movie that no one's ever seen, or not not even seen yet. Yeah, yeah, that was a good marketing move by Blumhouse. <laughs> the time they were going to release it, of course, uh, I think a, a horrendous shooting happened. So uh, it was, it was. And smart. I think that there was a, I, I think that there's a lot of political stuff going on too. I forget what was going on, but I think there's a lot of political stuff that they're like, uh, I don't know right now. <laughs> that was the main reason why they pulled it, and of course uh-huh. the politic world as well. Um, yeah. So they did it out of respect of the shooting. Um, and then, yeah. you know, when Universal pulled the plug on it, they, they actually came on a statement that they probably weren't ever going to release it. And then, like... Yeah, well, because when they announced they were going to release it this year, I was surprised. I was like, oh, I thought we weren't going to be able to watch that at all. <laughs> and then uh, they just said, yeah, we're going to release it. It's coming out in March. And they, they came out with the trailer like a month before the movie actually came out. I was like, oh, cool. And, this and I, don't, I don't think the criticism is, is that bad, to be honest. I don't, I don't think a lot of people are like, oh, my God, this political stuff is so annoying i i've just seen nothing but like reviews on it like oh this movie was good this movie is bad nothing about like politics really yeah no it was uh it was just kind of i mean i saw i saw the political standpoint of it but mm-hmm. i i know why they they took it out for the reasons they yeah. did I oh mean, yeah yeah once you guys watch this movie you'll see exactly why they pulled it one movie um like i said if you liked ready or not um you're gonna probably enjoy this it's just basically ready or not with a more political twist to it so um, definitely go check it out. I mean, it's going to be on video on demand this Friday with Invisible Man, so that's a good double feature night. Or if you guys want to watch them throughout the weekend, that's fun to do. Um, mm-hmm. Scott, thanks so much for being on the podcast and and light and you know and and missed everything that's going on in this world, uh, whether it be politics, sickness, you know. I mean, we just got to keep that positive vibe and message going and give our fans what they want. So I'm glad we did this podcast and I'm glad that uh, everything health wise is good with me and you and that we're still going to be grinding out content, content no matter what happens. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, everyone just needs to stay positive. I've been pushing this message a lot because, I mean, I'm, oh man, I'm going a little crazy being uh, not quarantined, but isolated from theme parks and, and just life right now life and society but you know everyone just gotta stay positive everyone has just gotta stay happy we all gotta come together as a community no matter if you're the horror community theme park community in some way all of us are tied together 
um, we all just gotta come together and, and be happy and think of the positive side, not the negative side, because screw the media that's saying you should be scared out of your mind. Think about yourself, think about the positiveness and think about happiness. And that's what's gonna keep this world running from going to like a dystopian future. <laughs> and it's a, it's a very ugly world out there right now, but um, like Rick West said it best, of course with Midsummer Scream, um, hopefully still going to be on by the time July rolls around. Um, mm -hmm. it, that's literally a place for where everyone can just literally leave the bullshit outside and come in. Yeah. And leave reality. Yeah. And I watched that whole podcast, so I love that. <laughs> it's such a nice guy, but it, it's the same message with here. Uh, YouTube is literally our space where we can leave the bullshit aside and make content for YouTube everyone. You're doing escape from reality. Yeah, it's literally it's literally a place where we can go get away from our bullshit and make content for everyone to enjoy and hopefully relate to and share thoughts about uh, depending on the, the subject matter uh, and just uh, positive vibes with everybody. So, uh, Scott, where can everyone follow you and find you on social media? All right, so across the board, you can find me SoCal Exploring. So SoCal Exploring on YouTube, SoCal Exploring on Twitter, SoCalExploring.com and then the only different one is Instagram which is SoCalExploring Media which I'm in contact with Instagram right now to to get this spam account taken down that's SoCalExploring because I want that name I just want it to be across the board you know so SoCalExploring everywhere except for Instagram that's SoCalExploring Media definitely so go follow Scott if you don't already um, he is a great theme park um, youtuber and you guys need to hit those bell notifications uh, make sure to you know leave them positive vibes on his channel. He get, he works very hard to do what he does, and uh, he sacrifices a lot of time and effort. But he does it all in the love of theme parks and all of the love for the fans. So uh, mm -hmm. definitely go support Scott. And um, Scott, we will have to do this again sometime soon, brother. And it was fun having you on. Talk a little bit about you. Talk a little bit about horror. And uh, yeah, we're, we'll definitely do this again. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I thank you for having me on, Anthony, as usual. Oh, yeah, for sure, brother. And with that being said, I'm your host, Anthony. This is the Mindless Horror Podcast, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, smash that like button and leave some comments down below so Scott can read all your nice comments about how much you, you enjoyed this episode. And I read the comments. <laughs> there you go. Also, if you guys are not yet already, please hit that subscribe button with that bell notification so you're alerted every time I put up a new video on this channel. Also, if you guys want to take it a step further, follow us on social media, Twitter at Knights of Horror and Instagram at The Knights of Horror. Keep up with what we're going to be doing releasing content wise. Or if you want to just see me be me on social media, of course, Instagram stories is where I'm always at. Um, and if you're feeling a little extra generous, we have a Patreon. Um, anywhere from $1 to $20. Um, the money that we get from the Patreon goes right back to the channel so we can upgrade equipment, um, go to events for you guys, which right now there's really nothing to go to. So uh, yeah. we'll save that <laughs> money to go to a future event, uh, hopefully when this coronavirus uh, leaves us. And yeah, but other than that, uh, subscribing is just our our biggest uh, our biggest one for us. Keeping and, up and to date. Yeah, we just we just love you guys and we love making content for you guys and uh, amidst the coronavirus, we are still going to be pushing out content regardless. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Scott, for coming on and we will see you guys next time.